Danny Thomas. And Gene Hagen as his wife. And Jerry Jackson and Wesley Hamer as their children. Make room for Daddy. Honey, be sure you get all the lumps out. I want it to be just right. Aren't you being especially nice to Daddy? Well, your Daddy was especially nice to me last night. Took me to Gilmore's for a steak, then to a play, and after the play to El Morocco. I think I'll cook his favorite hash brown potatoes, too, huh? Gotcha, Mommy! <laughs> Rusty, one more gotcha, Mommy, and I'm gonna got your camera. Oh, honey, not on the floor. Oh, 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 it's hot. Mother, Ooh. we'll just have to stop that little scene from taking pictures. Last night, he sneaked up on me when I was asleep and snapped me with my mouth wide open. I'm going to charge the kids a penny apiece to look at her tonsils. <laughs> Boy, will I make a lot of money out of your picture. <laughs> Rusty, Rusty, you come back. Rusty. Oh, well, I guess he's got to pay for the film somehow. Mother, what play did Daddy take you to see last night? It was called The Seven Year Itch, honey. Was it good? No, oh, it was a riot. There was one scene where the girl falls through a trap door into a man's apartment and... Go on. I'll uh, pick it up ten years from now, honey. <laughs> oh. Mother! Grandma, you're here already. It seems so. I'd better get dressed. Oh, what's the matter, Mother? My nerves are not what they used to be. Oh? When I came in, I stooped down to pat Laddie. All of a sudden, there was a flash, and I heard, Gotcha, Grandma. <laughs> Is he taking that camera shopping with us? No, no. Danny's going to take him to the theater this afternoon. Oh, well, did you have a good time last night? Oh, that husband of mine is a doll. Do you know what he did? He gave up his poker night so that we could do the town. Oh, and Mother, you've got to see the seven-year itch. What a play. The seven-year itch? Mm -hmm. What's that? Well, it's about a man who's been happily married for seven years, only has eyes for his wife. Then his wife goes away on a vacation, and a pretty girl crosses his path. And he gets the itch. Exactly. And then one eye wanders over to the pretty girl, and for the next two acts, he's the happiest cross-eyed man in New York. Here, here, let me do that. As long as you're lucky enough to have an itchless husband, well, you might as well get his potatoes right. <laughs> oh, we've been married for 12 years. I wonder if Danny's eyes ever wandered. Not Danny. He'd never look at another woman. Mother, don't you dare call my husband abnormal. <laughs> when a man gives up his poker game to take his wife out for the night, she's on solid ground. Oh, I know, Mother. I have complete faith in Danny. You're absolutely right. Any man who'd give up his poker night to take out his wife... Wait a minute. <laughs> Why did he give up his poker night? Nothing's ever dragged him away before. Carrie was born between a royal flush and a full house. <laughs> Why did he give up his poker game? He did it to take me to see the seven-year itch. Yeah, but why should he take me to see that particular play about a husband who's getting restless? Mother, I think he's preparing me for something. Now, Margaret. No, that, that play, that play could have been a preview of a coming attraction. Maybe he wants me to realize that, well, 12 years is a long time, and I suppose he's grown a little tired of me. After all, I'm not as young as I was when he married me. Yeah, but whose fault is that, I'd like to know? <laughs> Haven't I given him the best years of my life? Morning, everybody. Lovely morning, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? Good morning, Danny. Good morning, Mom. Dear, haven't you anything to say to your ever-loving husband who took you out and showed you the wonders of Broadway? Monster! <laughs> the best years of my life. Was that picture playing again? <laughs> what are you staring at? I just wanted to make sure you weren't cross-eyed. <laughs> Honey, did, did, did I do something? 
No, no, nothing at all. And you're just perfect. It was something silly. It's too silly to even talk about. I'm sorry. Mm. Morning. <laughs> Mother, we better get started or we'll miss your beauty appointment. Oh, my gosh. Hey, what about my breakfast? There's a waffle burning for you there. Hmm? Oh, my gosh. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, honey. Oh. I'm, I'm sorry about the waffle, sweetheart, but, but I fixed your favorite hash brown potatoes. Yes, no slough. I think <laughs> I guess I uh, forgot to turn on the stove. Oh, that's all right. I'll just push the potatoes aside and eat the ashes. <laughs> Mother, we're ladies, it is. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll be right there. I'm awful sorry about the breakfast. Mm, bye, sweetheart. Bye, bye. Rosie. Bye, dear. Don't look at me. You married her. <laughs> Daddy, can I go next door and take a few pictures of the man with the dog? Yeah, but just a few pictures of the man with the dog. Don't be wasting the film. Take interesting pictures, not just anything. This morning he took five pictures of one burned waffle. <laughs> All right, go on. Be careful. Daddy. My Danny Williams! <laughs> oh, it's just wonderful seeing you again. And doesn't it bring back memories wiping off my lipstick? You know, I saw your name on the marquee out front, and I said to my girlfriend, that's my old friend Danny Williams. I've just got to see him and give him a great big Kiss. And that's what I did. Oh, I'd love to stay and talk with you for hours and hours, but my girlfriend is waiting for me and I've got to go. But I'm going to look you up again and we'll have a real nice get-together for old times' sake. Oh, what a thrill it is to see you again. Goodbye, Danny. <laughs> Who was that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Stop breathing so hard, you're fogging my glasses. Here's a picture of a cat on a stoop. Hmm, picture of a cat on a stoop? Here's you, Mommy, bending down to pick up a potato. Mommy bending down. <laughs> This is you, Grandma, bending down to Pat Laddie. Grandma bending down. <laughs> There's a family resemblance. <laughs> Here's a picture of the waffle you burned for Daddy. Hmm. One burned waffle. Another burned waffle. Ooh, remind me to burn these. Another burned waffle. One more burned waffle. Daddy kissing a lady. Daddy kissing a lady. <laughs> Another burned waffle. Another burned wa <laughs> Daddy kissing a lady. <laughs> uh, Rusty, uh, where did you take this picture, honey? At the theater three days ago. Oh, well, uh, honey, I've got a wonderful idea. Why don't you take your camera, come on, and you run down to the lobby and take some pictures down there, all right? Hey, okay, Mommy. Bye. Bye. Now I know why he took me to see the seven-year itch. <laughs> that face looks familiar. Margaret, I can hear those little wheels in your head turning. It's probably only a Bobby Soxer thanking him for his autograph. Mother, I know who that is. It's a girl Danny used to go with before we were married. Irva... Irva Kruger, that's it. Irva Kruger. Oh, she used to sing off key, too. <laughs> Wouldn't you rather look at a burned waffle? No. Now, what do you suppose she was doing in Danny's dressing room? Oh, it's nothing. Mm, this nothing has some figure. <laughs> this picture was taken three days ago. That's the day old lover boy couldn't take me to dinner because he had a press conference. Hmm. Now I know what he was pressing. <laughs> Margaret, I think you're an idiot. That means nothing at all. If it means nothing at all, why didn't he tell me about it three days ago? Well, well, he probably will when he, when he thinks of it. He's got a thousand things on his mind. He's forgetful. 
what other husband would send you a valentine on Groundhog Day? <laughs> well, I'm not going to let him forget this. Chips, chips, I know I need publicity, but what if the parachute doesn't open? That'll get you. That'll get you on every front page in the country. Uh, Hello, sweetheart. Hiya, Mom. I just pay in a chip three hours between shows. What better way to spend them than to come home and get a sweet loving kiss from my sweet loving wife? And a sandwich. Oh, much better than a sandwich. But it's not as filling. <laughs> I, uh, I think I can take care of the sandwich part. Okay, Mom, thanks. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, anything new happening at the theater lately? Colin, you gotta get married. Do you hear that? There's a lovely wife. Interested in what her husband's doing. Certainly. You do so many things. <laughs> Usual theater problems, honey. You know, I'm always wrestling with something. I know. <laughs> but haven't you been having any fun lately? Like uh, maybe the day you took Rusty to the theater with you? What kind of fun? Like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that kind of fun. <laughs> oh, honey, we, we, I, I, I can explain that. <laughs> that uh, it's a girl. <laughs> That's a good explanation. Go on. Well, uh, what I mean is, uh, we were in the dressing room. In the dressing room. Chips and Rusty and I, and, and this girl came in and she threw her arms around me and she kissed me. Big kiss. Yeah, and, and she looked familiar. Very familiar. Uh, I thought I knew her. He knew her. I, I just couldn't place the face, you see, and, and I, uh, I, uh, I, 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 Come on, Chips, cut it out. I mean, tell her I'm telling the truth. That, that's right, Margaret. He, he's telling the truth. He didn't know whose kiss he was enjoying. Chips! <laughs> well, I can tell him it was Irva Kruger's. You're right. That is Irva Kruger. I should have known that kiss. I mean, I should have known her. <laughs> sure, I remember. All right, Danny, skip the act. Now look, Muggins. Don't you look Muggins me. Excuse you be me. quiet. Now wait a minute. I don't have to be a witness to a fight. I can go to my girlfriend's house and be in the main event. Bye. <laughs> Chip. Bye. Well? You love me and you're jealous. I can't stand you and I'm jealous. <laughs> oh, this is wonderful. Oh, this is really great. This is the supreme in compliments as far as I'm concerned. That you, with that real sweet face, should be jealous of me with this. <laughs> Honey, I'm a lucky man. Look, Lucky, I see a picture of you kissing Irva Kruger. I put two and two together and get a very nasty four. <laughs> now, wait a minute, honey. Let's not let this kissing get out of hand. I mean, I love you very much. The pedestal I've placed you upon has no room for another woman. Can I help it if Irva Kruger comes barging into the dressing room? throws her arms around me and kisses me like this. You kissed her like that? <laughs> why, why, you, you, will of the whip! <laughs> What's the matter, Danny? Irva Kruger? How did you know? Was it in the papers already? <laughs> Well, didn't you know? Every mother-in-law is a private eye at heart. Yeah? Well, maybe you can tell me what's the matter with your daughter. She loves you. Hmm. Danny, I wish you'd try and make up with her. Now, these things can grow, you know. I've seen it happen so many times over some trivial thing. And two people have too much pride to, to give in a little, and it, uh, it draws them apart. Listen, we're always having these quarrels, and I'm always the first to give in. Well, things are going to change around here. If your daughter thinks I'm going to run crawling to her to ask her to forgive me for something I didn't do, she's going to have to wait a long time. Honey, please forgive me, sweetheart. I don't understand. You're coming out of this on the I've ever seen. Can I open up my face and satisfied with a smirk? <laughs> oh, sweet. What were you dreaming about? 
I was dreaming I was Bluebeard and about to do in my eighth wife. <laughs> I bet it was about Irva. You're right, you're right, it was about Irva. I was looking all over town for Irva. That smile on your face you weren't looking for, you found her. <laughs> oh, honey, I thought we settled this whole thing after dinner. Now, there's nothing between Irva and me. If you just stop and think about it for a minute, you see how foolish you really are. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. I don't know how I could have been so childish. All right, go to sleep. Yeah. I should have realized that, that Irva wouldn't even look at a man unless he were, he were suave and debonair and handsome as a Greek god. Oh, those things were never important to me. <laughs> what do you mean, those things were never important to you? It's settled, forget it. It isn't over, it isn't settled, and I won't forget it. For your information, in those days, I was very alluring to a lot of women. As a matter of fact, they thought I was the suavest and debonairest guy in town. <laughs> Must be dozens of women around who think I have a wild, strange kind of beauty. <laughs> I mean, I can fully understand that Irva should come to the theater and throw her arms around me and kiss me like that. She must have been fighting that urge for years. So don't think that I'm still not attractive to Irva. <laughs> hey, kid, I'm an actor, not a high jumper. <laughs> hey. Come on, sweetheart, we're carrying this thing too far. Like your mother said, from a, from a little thing, you can make a real big thing out of it. Here. Remember that song I used to sing in my act? Made a lot of sense. You remember that song, don't you, honey? You gotta give a little, take a little, and let your poor heart break a little. That's the story of, that's the glory of love. You gotta laugh a little, cry a little, and let the clouds roll by a little. That's the story of, that's the glory of. <laughs> How do you like that? Fell asleep on an F sharp. <laughs> Oh, don't you think it's time to remove the Iron Curtain? <laughs> now, Mother. I oh, know. Go on, say it. It's none of my business. Well, it... Oh, I know, I know. The umpire always gets conked with a pop bottle. But I'm not going to keep out of this. Oh, well, now, Mother, now, please. Look, if I were in your position, and I thought my husband was two-timing me, I wouldn't just sit here. I'd do something about it. I'd fight for him. I'd put up a screen, all right, but around her bed, in a hospital. Oh, no, Mother, you wouldn't do any such thing. Yeah, I would. But before I condemn her or my husband, I'd go to her and talk about it and, and get the facts. It's beneath my dignity to talk to that... Don't that you think love is worth more than dignity? Mother, I'm not going to talk to her. Oh. You're a coward. What? You built up a whole great big case against her. Now you're afraid to find out the truth. Mother... Well, I'm not. You may not have faith in Danny, but I have. You're not married to him. <laughs> My husband tells me that Danny is an honorable and faithful husband. And besides, I went over and had a talk with Irva. Mother! <laughs> now it's your turn. What? Come on. What are you doing, Mother? Come on. What? Mother! Irva! Hello, Margaret. 
You don't know how sorry I am about this whole mix-up. Oh? You see, I haven't seen Danny in so many years, and I was so happy to see him that I guess my greeting was a little warmer than I intended. Well, when he came home, he did look a little scorched around the edges. Oh, you don't have to worry about me. But I just wanted you to know that I'm a very happily married woman. What about that picture? Uh, talking about pictures, there are a few I'd like to show you. What? Here. Here's the Eric, age eight. Katie, age six and a half. Rosemary, age five. And little Stevie, age two. Four of them? Yeah. And here's uh, Big Stevie, age 34. Ooh, that's what I call a handsome man. Oh, Mother, look at little Stevie. Isn't he cute? <laughs> I like Big Stevie. Uh, <laughs> uh, and Rosemary, look at, Ron, look at that curly hair. Isn't that... Well, Herba, won't you stay for lunch? Oh, I'd love to. Oh, wonderful. Mother, would you get things started? Okay. Excuse me, just a minute. Right. I'll be right back. Did you, did you have a good show tonight? Hmm? Yeah, fine, fine. Good. Uh, darling, I've been thinking all day and I've decided I've been a pretty silly wife. Silly? For being suspicious and jealous. Oh, can't blame you for that. No, 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 I'm a dope. After being married to you for 12 years, I should have realized that you've never lied to me. I am a dope. Well, since I'd never lied to you, you are. <laughs> Honey, you said that, that kissing Irva was nothing? I was prepared to search this whole town till I found that girl, Irva, and brought her right to this apartment. Told you right in front of her that it's nothing. Do you think I have so little confidence in you that, that I would force you to bring Irva up here as a witness? Oh, your word is good enough for me. Well, what changed your mind? Nothing, nothing at all. It, it's just that I have complete faith in my husband. Gee, honey, you don't know what that means to me. Gee, that's wonderful. I mean, how many men have wives who take them at their word? Oh, there must be millions. Daddy, Daddy! Oh, see, I thought you were in bed. I wanted to show Daddy these pictures. He's still taking pictures. What have you got? Here's one of Mike the doorman. Mike the doorman. Good old Mike. <laughs> this is one of Terry robbing the icebox. <laughs> Terry robbing the icebox. <laughs> This is one of the same lady who kissed you. Irva? When did you take this little masterpiece? When she came to visit Mommy. Um, <laughs> 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 Thank you, you're, you're, not, you're not mad now, are you? Oh, no. No, why should I be mad? I've got a wife who trusts me, who respects me. <laughs> My wife trusts me implicitly. And why? She's got the FBI out rounding up witnesses to prove I didn't do anything. Danny? Danny, now, now, please, honey, don't be mad. Sweetheart? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Danny? Honey? You gotta give a little, take a little. Your poor heart break a little. That's the glory of, that's the story of love. As long as there are two of us, we've got the world and all its charms. And when the world is Got each other's arms. You gotta win a little, lose a little, and always sing the blues a little. <laughs> That's the glory. 
that 